super duper beauty of your mercy. Truly, I can talk the trumpet sound of a mercy. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can describe the super duper beauty of your mercy. Amen. Amen. To this powerful inspiration. Like I always love to say, time will come when all this wonderful song will be resung to the glory of Abba Yehovah. I say a powerful amen to it. Alright now, family. Here we are again in this in the heavenly courtroom of Abba Yehovah with this powerful life-giving message already titled for you and me right at part one. Okay, the mystery of love. Flash Yon Kippur. Tabernacles equals to the resurrection of the last day part four. Are you ready to be resurrected? If you are one of the first, get ready, stand on your feet and get 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 excited. It is almost done. A new body and a glorified body is almost here. If you are the elect, right now. So we begin. This is the part four family. In case I share this in the news feed, you know, Facebook. I can do that only on YouTube. I don't actually do that. But on Facebook, yes, of course, I can do that. Right now, in case I share this, you know, you call me contact, okay? With this part four, you have a list to one and two and three. Please kindly drop and go and listen to one and two and three in order for you not to get lost. If you stick and build your case with this part four, sorry, you're going to miss it or 100%. You're going to get confused, okay? Our mystery here, our ministry here, excuse me, our ministry here is to get people, you know, Enlighten, enlighten with the things in the things of Almighty Yahuwah. Okay, to awaken you for the call.
to get you prepared for the rapture. That is that, that, that is the nature of this segment. Okay, this is the reason every Shabbat we always go out, you know, to bring this understanding to our brethren, you know, in this graveyard, you know. <laughs> All right now. So right in case I share this, in the, of course, I'm going to be doing that. Can they drop, let's see, to one and two and three and still keep going on because I'm going to upload the part five and six. We're going to end at six. That should be the second day of the week, the one you call moon day. Moon day. After the one you call sun day, it is the first week of the day. That's what we're looking to. What is the law? The mystery of law we did already with part, you know, first lecture that you will find at part three. The introduction is one and two. First letter you got you can get that. That is why I said go and listen to one and two and three. No need to be repeating one words over here. Of course, this is the segment that is being called part four. So it has an origin. Go to one and two and three, all right? And proceed to five and six. But that will be uploaded. Mm -hmm. Second day of the week. All right, now let's get started. Yeah. Maseke borua hakodesh karakebo Maseke bo yehuwa karakebo se o karakebo ye karakebo Maseke borua hakodesh karakebo se o karakebo ye ye o Karakebo, yeah. Karakebo, say. Karakebo, say. All right, now. So, right now, we proceed to the very second lecture of this work called Law. In the US or in the America, wherever, <laughs> they have over 2,000 law. And of course, every Christian over there, they, 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 they keep to that rule. But whether they don't come to the royal law, they will say it's just too much. 630. Too much for you, but you can keep my maid law over 2,000 years in the U.S. All over, in the four corners of the earth. There is no way, no place without law. But you you, you, you can so call, you know, in keeping my maid law. But you said that of the royal law is going to usher you into eternal life. You said it's too hard or it's just too much. All right, now we shall see. That is the nature of this segment, okay? I'm really the deep meaning of the, this work called law. So listen to one and two and three, right? So right now, what was the first letter? L. So what could that go for? Listen to three. You're gonna find it over there. Powerfully established. Alright. Lamb of Yehuwah takes away the sins of the world. It was powerfully established, okay? Uh-huh. Right now we proceed to the second letter, which is called A. So what could that be? Atomet. 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 <laughs> Atonement for this last generation. Did you get that? Atonement for this last generation. You know, this atonement, this one called atonement, that is what simply called Yom Kippur. You can find it in the title because this is a segment that is of threefold. We are digging into the mystery of law and Yom Kippur, it came from the law and Tabernacles came from the happy tabernacle last shabbat was just the mystery excuse me last shabbat was um oh uh, uh, not feast actual of course not the day of uh, atonement which is simply called yom kippur all right so i want to look into it because i uh, uh, uh just the way abbe you want to it for me you want me to treat all together in one all right because yom kippur is going to usher us into the feast of tabernacle we are already in so yom kippur has a primary origin, secondary, you know, they keep going on until the very fulfillment of it all. So, Yom Kippur is not something of the old. It's as it yet fulfilled at all. As we begin to dig into these mysteries, therefore you yourself, you're going to say, wow, I thought it was done away with. Being nailed to the cross, yes, by the another one you receive, which is called Jesus Christ from the pit of hell. All right? Is the disagreeing spirit over here. Yom Kippur hasn't yet been fulfilled at all, all right? So I want to put some scriptures in order to validate this. So right now, let's go to the law. That's where Yom Kippur is being given unto us. Leviticus uh, 23, 27, I read. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be 
an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your soul, souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. So, family, follow up with the part six. We're going to dig more into it. I just want to take it simple here. All right. So, but in the part six, you're going to see why this young Kippur is still valid until the very, for this last generation. I'm going to brief it, but I want to talk about the sacrifices of Yahushua over here. Uh, uh, 20, excuse me, 8 now. And ye shall do no work, okay, okay. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement. F to make an atonement for you before you, while you are Elohim. For who so, so okay, right, I, I, I drop it over here, okay. Follow up with past 6. We're going to dig more to the very last of it all. I want to tell you, I come over here because this is where the law is. You know, all seven feasts has been, you know, uh, a place over here and to extra one uh hanukkah and uh, the feast of uh, purim that is nine all together but seven biblical seven feast is just in this place leviticus 23 so right now we get a, a you know already the picture so let's go to where actually it's been done all right now so here we are leviticus 16 i want to read from seven now and you shall take the two goats let's see now and he shall take the two goats and present them before Yehovah at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All right. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Yehovah and the other lot for the uh, skip goat. That is Azazel goat. You know what a skip goat simply means? The one that is responsible for all iniquity. The one that gets the blame for all evil that is going on on earth. All right now. Now, and Aaron, you know, is Aaron the high priest? It's a replica, okay? Yahushua Hamishak is the eternal high priest uh, in, in the order of Meleki Zedek. You can see that Hebrew seven already in your quiet. Uh huh. Now, and Aaron shall bring the goat upon which Yahuwah's a lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. What is sin? Listen to part three, okay? It is a king with a kingdom of disagreement and with a follower to carry out his wickedness to deceive the elect, okay? Now, a ten, excuse me, but the God on which the Lord fell to be scapegoat shall be presented alive before Yehovah to make an atonement with him and to let him, him go for a scapegoat, a scapegoat into the wilderness. Rabobo Sakayabayaba. This, where I just read, hasn't yet fulfilled. You know, for this 7,000 years, we're already in the beginning of not 7,000 years of the world existence, no. Not get it twisted of human existence, of human governorship. All right. So we know each day of the feast of tabernacle. I'm gonna deal more with the love last verse because that one go for the feast of tab so amazing, powerfully. That one go for the feast of tabernacle. All right. So right now, each day of the eight days of the feast of tabernacle represent a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. The last great day follow up with part five. You're gonna see what that is. The eighth day. That is being called the last great day. You see this Azazel go the skip goat. Okay. He is not the one that atoned for us. He is not the one that take away our sin. He is not the goat for the sin of free. Not at all. Rather he is the one that uses his own hair to carry every sin on earth. And be sent into the wilderness. See. <laughs> they are demons. Lie is a demon. Fornication is a spirit. They are all spirits. Let's not rush it. We get some more. Stay in the same chapter. We are dealing with atonement over here. And I would like to know the fulfillment of this atonement. It is in the 7th. 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the life goat. And confess over him all the iniquities. What is iniquities? Breaking the royal law. Living lawlessness. All the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. There is a final witness of this very call, this very atomic day, this very feast. Let me also call it a feast. There is a fulfillment of it all. It's in the last 
days. If in the end of the seventh, I will put that for you and prove it unto you. <laughs> you know, I normally ask a question. When you go to the toilet, you know, you just put your whatever that your face is and you flush it away. Where did it go? You will not be thinking, oh, the magical system, you know, swallow it. No, it goes somewhere. Brain refund and prepared. And before you know it, three hours time, it comes back to your water. That is the system of this wicked animal called sin. He polluted the whole world. All right, now, when you confess, you lie, or you steal, you fornicate, you kill, you commit abortion, whatever and whatever. You're like, oh, forgive me. I have done this. He will forgive you. So, but that sin is a demon. So, he is going to remove that demon from you to where? Into the wilderness. If not, you will do it again. This is what the day of at Kippur actually means. Last Shabbat was it. Powerful. I am a family. <laughs> How so we did it? Okay, because we are the people of the book. All right, now the same chapter again, 23. Uh, okay, Leviticus 23 now. Then I'm ready 34. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you. To make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as Yehuah commanded Moshe. This is the Azazel goat. The skip goat. So I want to let you know who is the skip, skip goat. Who is the Azazel goat. To whom shift all blames. I want to let you know that. Let's put some scripture before we do that. Alright now. Numbers chapter 15. We we'll take from 15. One, one ordinances shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger. The stranger always means the Gentile, okay? That is being grafted in, all right? That sojourneth with you and ordinances forever in your congregations as ye are so, as ye are. So shall the stranger be before Yehovah. One law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you so this one does not really uh unnecessarily only the uh, people of the book also the grafted in gentile that keep the royal law he said as we fast you should also do the same all right so follow up with part three uh five and six would you know uh, dig more into that so why the abba yahuwah yahushua has already the messiah the biblical messiah which is called yahushua has already been crucified in the cross why should he say this Ordinance is, 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 is everlasting. It is eternal. Why? Follow up. We're going to see that in Ezekiel's temple. We're going to hear the high eternal priest is going to be doing it, okay, until this master of sin be sent into the eternal wilderness. Because he's still here on earth. Into the eternal wilderness. So when he's being cast out at the end of the 7,000 years, in the 8,000 years, there's nothing at all that doeth iniquity. So we're going to be taking these days as a day of celebration in memoria to commemorate how Abiyuwa did with the generator of sin, with the author of sin. We are going to be celebrating it eternity to eternity in commemorating how he saved his people from the power of his you know, judgment of eternal damnation. So right now let us see who is Azazel good the scapegoat that needs to use his own head to carry all blames all right now this is the picture this is how the uh, early high priest will put his two hands as we just read from the royal law and confess every single seal but use his own head uh the azazel goat and send him now to the wilderness there is a final wilderness of this azazel goat and i will let you know who is azazel here i am in the book of anuka chapter 8 verses 1 and look at the one you call Enoch the seventh from Adam. I read now from his own book. I read now for the what this is the word of Abi Yehuwah. You know, constantly do away with all this book in order to get us all confused. But we still have it, however. In any way by way, we still get it. I read now chapter 8, verses 1. And as I said, taught men to make sword. Alright now. And as I said, taught men to make swords and knives and sheets. And uh, breastplates, and make note to them the matters of the earth, and the art of working them, and bracelets, and on uh, ornaments, and use of uh, atom, uh, anatomy, and the beautifying of the eyelid, and all kinds of costly stones, and all coloring uh, tinctures, and this okay, and there arose much god uh, godlessness, uh -huh, and they commit fornication. 
and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. As I said, you see what he taught? He taught war, confusion, seducing, all right? How women, all this makeup, these teachers came, all the weapons of war. He came from Azazel, all the weapons of what we are going through today on earth. Azazel was the one who ushered them all in, all right? This costly stone, that is the love of money to go after earth. He taught it all to go after the things of the world, not obey what he taught it all. We see as we just right now. So you're going to blow off your mind now. Who is this very Azazel? <laughs> it's a folly date, all right? We put some more. All right, now, in the same book of Anuka, chapter 9, verse 6, I read, Thou uh, sawest what Azazel hath done, who hath taught all unrighteousness on earth, and revealed the eternal secrets which we are preserved in heaven, which men we are striving to learn. He revealed all the mysteries. Okay, the one about you are reviewed unto this as as go, he taught it to women, precisely. All right, he taught it to them, all right, to carry out against the men because he have says, of course, with the women. Genesis 6 proved that to us, we see it everywhere. All right, now here I am. We proceed to chapter 10, Anoka, chapter 10, verses 8. Now, I read, and the whole earth has been corrupt. Through the works that were taught by Azazel, to him ascribe all sin. Did you get that? That is why all sin needs to be confessed upon his head. Who is Azazel? It's another name for dragon. It's another name for serpent. It's a folly uh, seraphim. It's the high ranking angel in heaven that declared war, which is the great dragon. He was the one who declared war and gazed upon Abbe Yehovah. And Abbe Yewana ordered his junior son, Amike, to throw him out of his heaven. And he was being cast here on earth. And as they throw him down here, Amike, throw him down here on earth. He now get ready to begin to mislead every single one birth into this earth. They see, like Romans 5, uh, uh, 12 to 13 said, he said, sin was already here before the law. That is why the law now exposed who is sin. In order for you not to be a victim, he exposes the strategies, the tricks, and lies of this, you know, crafty, you know, deity that fell from glory. That is why the Lord, that is what the Lord did. He exposed all his deeds to you in order for you not to be his victim. All right. So that is why all sin needs to be confessed upon the head of Azazel. He is the high-ranking angel, which is called Seraphim. You can see Yeshua Yehu Azariah chapter 6 for that. That banner over Yehua's head. So all sin needs to be laid upon his head. Because he taught it all. I just let you know it's Azazel. He is what? The great dragon. The serpent, the folly seraphim. Here I am. Revelation 12, 9. A confirmation. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. You see his origin. Where? Genesis 3. Called the devil and Satan. They are together. Devil Satan is Jesus. Which is the folly Cherubims, okay, which deceiveth the whole world as Azazel taught iniquity to deceive the whole world. That is why to him all sin must be ascribed upon his own head. Who deceiveth the whole world? He was cast out into the earth, is over here, and his angels were cast out with him. That is it, you know, a tree. There's no tree without branches and whatever. They are all together to work this wickedness. But Messiah, because we are his victim. That is, what, that is the job of Yehoshua, right? Stay in the heaven. We're going to prove that. Every once in a year, you confess sin every day. That, that is normal. Every day, that is normal. We throw him out of you. He's coming again. But once in a year, he's going to get, you know, every arrow he throw or cast on you, he will remove it from you and put upon his head. And why is he still coming back again? Yes, sometimes he attack our flesh. He deal with our flesh. All his agents, they are all over there. Even as I said, God is being sent to the wilderness. All his works are still over there. They immediately you touch his work, mistakenly, it's loosed and returned back to you for the judgment again. That is why he's been taken away from you every year. But there is a final wilderness. Final, final one. We'll get to that now. Let's see now the final fulfillment of the young people. Genesis Bereshit 3, 13. And Yehovah said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. All right, now. And Yahweh said unto the serpent, Because you have done this cost, 
releases causes upon him, not just with the serpent only. This is the sentences. And uh, 15, I will put an he also caused the woman, all right? He also caused the man. He also caused an F. The land is caused. The ground you put is caused, all right? Uh-huh. And manner loss. You can take it from uh, uh, 13, way down to 24, the very end. Going to see cause called manner loss, the presence of Abba Yehuda, that sweet, powerful fellowship we once had. Man lost it. Okay, but we're going to get it back in totality in the end of this. That is the reason for the Yom Kippur. We're going to get it back. The land where you put your feet is cursed. Okay, the womb right now is cursed. You still go through pain. Woman, when you want to break menstruation, is still coming out is cursed. Man, you still walk, isn't it? It's cursed. Well, that is, this is why Yehoshua is making an atonement for you. Because you still live in that cause. <laughs> Christianity, come on now. And stop deceiving yourself. Are you not walking woman in the Christian door? Christianity woman. Why are you getting through pain, giving birth? Why are you seeing blood? That is cause, my friend. Wake up and put your house in order. It's the nature of this segment. You see these causes? I pay Yehuwa is pulling it out. And pull it upon Azazel's head. When is he going to do that? It is at the end of 7,000 years. That after the 7,000 year woman of Hebrew, uh, excuse me, excuse me, yeah, well known as Hebrew, it is Yehudith language. After that, when a woman of Yehudith, or the one that make it into the kingdom, whether Gentile or the people of the book, give it birth, you don't cry no more. Piam! It's out. Automatic. It is because of pain, we put one leg in earth and one in the grave. Some passed out. So can't make it. Some both the mother and the baby die. Okay? It is cause. Until the 7,000 years, this cause is still, you know, this is the reason for the young, uh, for, for young Kippur atomics. Hmm? All right, now we come to the final fulfillment. Uh, see, this is uh, uh, second to the last fulfillment. All right? Revelation 21. And I saw an angel came down. Or come down from heaven, having the key of the bottleless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he lay hold on the dragon, which is Azazel, and that that old serpent right from Genesis three, okay, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bind him a thousand years. This is the final Ezra. No, excuse me. This is the second of the final Ezra. He binds him for a thousand years and three now, and cast him into the bottleless pit and shut him up and set a seal. Upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years shall be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. A little season is going to be uh, the last uh, deception of him, which is lie to twist the royal law once again. It will come out from prison. That is going to be a short period of a time. I don't know, but a very, very short period of a time because that is going to usher him now into the eternal wilderness, into the eternal. Exile. You see, this Azazel and this devil, which is called Jesus and Allah, okay, they turn the whole world now into the wilderness. We are all in the wilderness. They turn the whole world into the wilderness. That is what we see in Yeshua, Isaiah 14. You can read it from 12, way down to 19. He said he will not let the prisoner go. He turned the whole world into wilderness. Okay, so today the whole world is into wilderness. What makes it now wilderness? Lies, twisted, the royal law. Breaking the royal law. This is the nature. Excuse me. This is the mystery of law. Okay. Of this Azazel. Law exposed the dealings, the strategies of Azazel. Unfortunately, billions miss it. They couldn't get it. They said Jesus nailed it to the cross. Because it's because actually law is only really a cause for Jesus and all his followers. You see the causes, causes, causes. Yes. He will be heaped upon his own head. In order for that cause not to be hip upon his own, we prevent you not to keep the law. In order for it for the cause to remain, this cause has to you know, live with someone. Either it goes back to the uh, generator of sin, or he lives in you. You know, that's it. All right, now let me show you his final exile. That's in chapter Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the link of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and still be, uh, still be. A tormented day and night forever and ever. It is the link of fire. When you scroll down, you're going to also see people that their name is not written in the book of Lamb, uh, Lamb of Life. They will also be cast into the eternal link of it. He said that is the second decanary from 14 and, and uh, 14. And death and hell 
we are cast into the link of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the link of fire. All right now. All right now. Here I am. The body. The Torah. Twenty seven verses twenty six. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say Amen. This is the causes that need because I cannot say I am keeping every part of the law. I, I won't be deceiving myself by saying that, okay? I'm going to be deceiving myself. So right now, in your people, I bet you will remove those causes from me. A heap it upon us as I held. Not that I live in sin, not that I take glory or I take pleasure in sin, but yeah, ignorantly, sometimes I do fall on it. There is one, de de you know, de devilish fish I was eating. I never knew it was unclean. Only a few days I knew about it. What? There is a cause which means I break the law. Eating unclean food in the temple of Abiyawa. Yes, but in Yom Kippur, he will remove all these causes. He said, causes will, if you don't confirm it, if you don't keep it, you are under cause. So he will not take these causes away and put it upon Azazel's health. Because he is one that causes it all. He brought about sin. And the sin needs to be heaped upon his own head. Check it out. Deuteronomy 28 from verses 15. Where that or 68 is all causes. And those causes, they are all demons. It needs to be removed from you as you break the royal law. Because if you don't break his cause, if you if you don't keep it his cause, it's coming right to away, right away on you. But in Yom Kippur, it will be removed from you and put it upon the head of Hazel because he's the one that caused it all. Galatians again 1, verses 6 to 9, he also talks about cause. He also speaks about cause. Okay? When you break the royal law, it is cause. But it will be removed from you and put upon the originator of sin, which is as I said. What about the Revelation 22? The same. 18 to 19, it makes cause. Normally we add, okay, like I was just eating that fish, unclean fish. I add into it and I take out. It is cause. So in Yom Kippur, it's being removed from me. A heap upon the head of the originator of sins. Every now and then we confess this our sin, but there is a mandatory day which is Yom Kippur. The Yom Kippur, the final great day of Yom Kippur, it is the white judgment throne. That is the fulfillment of Yom Kippur. It is the white judgment throne. That is the day it's going to be accomplished. Not yet done at all. Yom Kippur simply means again national day redemption of Israel. He's going to pardon us and forgive our sins and remove all these things that cause sin that make us don't break his law. He will remove all these causes because when you break his cause, there's no two ways about that. I don't dare to rationalize it. I just face reality. When I break his oh, Father, deliver me from the causes. Because he said, if you don't confirm it, if you don't keep it, you are cursed. And all the people say, Amen. So shall it be. So, but in Yom Kippur, you plead for mercy, you plead for mercy. But in Yom Kippur, those causes will be removed from you. A heap upon eh, the head of the originator of sin. Where the Yom Kippur begins? It begins right in Genesis 3.21. I pay you one in Yom Kippur, in another way, simply make covering from sin. Covering from destruction. That is the meaning or, 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 originally of Yom Kippur. To cover you from destruction, and where did it? Where did Abiyawa himself in fire? Yahushua Hamashiach begins this Yom Kippur right in Genesis 3 21. He now make a garment of skin and cover them from destruction because they were naked. That of a sea, it is the chaos lives in you. It's gonna naked, it's gonna drag you down to the link of fire. But Yom Kippur said, I'm gonna cover you. I'm gonna cover you. My message is gonna cover you. Because no one on earth, and no one, I mean, no one, no one, absolute, no one that does not break the law. No one. But this is the nature and reason for you keep up. As you recognize your sin, you are walking towards your goals. I don't glory in sin, but I do fall. I don't mess up. I plead for mercy. I keep moving on. And all those causes from the law will be heaped upon the Azazel God is the originator of sin. Now, Re Revelation 17 for it, for you will see this Azazel, Jesus, all of them, they are in the wilderness. Okay, you will see it over there. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. What happened? They are the goat. Because their father is the Azazel goat. All these children, they are the goat. That's why they cannot get it right. They are also going into the eternal damnation, which is the Fana Yom Kippur. The one in the midst, we, the people of the book, the chosen one, and also the grafted in Jetta in the midst of these people will be delivered. And why? The Azazel and all his children will go to the link of fire. All right now. 
So I want to see what Yahushua is still doing right now in the heavenly. Why is this, does this say, like I said, I make that one clear already. And why is this still making that torment for us, even in the heavenly? Follow up, that will be very, very, you know, established. We're established in past six, the final clip or video. All right, let me read the few verses, verses here. Leviticus against this thing. You can take it this time, 12 to 20. I don't know, prove what Yahushua is doing right now in the heavenly. Right now. And he, verse 12, and he shall take a censer full of burning coals for, of fire from of the altar before Yehovah, and his hand full of sweet incense between smell, and bring it within the veil, that is the holies of holies, okay? And he shall put the incense, uh, incense upon the fire before Yehovah, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seed that is upon the uh, testimony that is uh, that he died not. And he shall take off the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat to eastward. That is the, where the throne of Abba Yahweh is in the Garden of Eden, eastward. And um, where is it? And before the mercy seat shall be sprinkled of the blood with his finger seven times. You see, the or oh, the the, the early, uh, uh, high priest will put lay his two hands upon the eyes as a good. And confesses sin, but what did the eternal high prince do? He crushed his head with his feet. Because as I said, you are just too small before my king. He's not gonna use his own hand to toy, right? He's gonna kick you out of his way. He crushes his head. The elder prince uh, prince uh, put his hand, you know, and confess no uh, uh, confess the sins of humanity upon it. the head of us as a goat, which is Allah. Okay, but the eternal high prince uses his own leg to let you know you are under his feet. You are just too small. <laughs> In fact, there is no battle between Azazel and Yehoshua. No, rather Mikael is the one to handle him. Hmm? All right now, Revelation. I want to see how Yehoshua is doing it. Just as Aaron is doing it over here, Yehoshua is doing it once in a year. On this day, Yom Kippur, he's doing it in the heavenly. Enter the holies of holies. We explore that when we come to the uh, last verse and the only one point we have. I read now, Revelation 8, 3 to 5. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a good censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. That is the day our prayer is being, you know, uh, collect uh, in the group. That is why it's called National Day Redemption of Israel. Upon the godly altar, did you see the altar, which was before the throne, that is the throne of Yahuwah, and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, are sent up before Yahuwah, uh, out of the angel's hand, that is Yehoshua, that angel is Yehoshua, is the angel of his presence, okay? And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And then we have a voice and thunder, uh, a thunderous and lightning and an earthquake. This is what took place. And the final one, the, I'm reading the final one. But once then Yehoshua is still doing it, but you will know why he is still doing it in a, a very broad way when we come to the just one point, the uh, past six. Revelation 5, 8, you're also going to see the prayer of the saints and, uh, okay, the prayer of the saints. We, this is being done on the Yom Kippur. From where I'm coming, Revelation 8, 3 to 5, it is the day of Yom Kippur. As we, you know, join in conjunction, you know, in agreement, fasting that day, this is how the altar of life, the eternal high points, make atonement for you. And it will remove every iniquity from you because that is an agreement. I don't need it. Take it away from me. It will remove it from me and heap it upon as a gold. And that is what we are looking into. The final one is the Revelation 20, which is the very end of the 7,000 years. After the thousand reign of the biblical Messiah. Romans 5, you can read 6 to 11. I'm just reading only 11 for the sake of time. And not only so, that we also join in Yahuwah through our Adonai Yehoshua HaMashiach, by whom we have now received the atonement. This atonement is in the end of 7,000 years, the final one. Hmm? Remember Revelation 8 said, 3 to 5 said, with, with the prayer of the saints. This is how we enter into the holies of holies in Yom Kippur. Hebrew 10, 19 to 22. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holies of holies, into the holiest by the blood of Yahushua. This is how we pass it through his blood. We normally go there, you know, in this very day of atonement, our prayer, because we are in conjunction with him. 
And you see what happened when you keep reading? It was destruction upon this Azazel goat and all the goats, his children. Matthew 25, okay, makes that so clear. The goats, they are going to Ezra, eternal Ezra, which is the link of fire. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 3 to 4, make it so clear that the gods of this world has blinded the eyes of many for you not to know what the day of atonement is. He don't want you to see the true light, the glorious light of this gospel. No, in order for the causes not to be heaped upon his own head, he blinded you not to see what it is. You see, as Yehovah did with the sins of humanity, and so he also, so he also did with the originator of sins. Now, Revelation 15, 5 to verses 8. I'm reading only 8 for the sake of time. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of Jehovah and from his power. And no man were able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. That is Yom Kippur. Door is shut. You can't come in anymore. Yom Kippur means judgment. To set you free and to deal with the one that ushers sin. Revelation 22. 11 now. He that is unjust, let him be unjust, see. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy, see. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous, see. And he that is holy, let him be holy, see. So there are some people that is going to be filthy for all eternity, which are the gold, they won't be redeemed. You see, when the door is shut, you won't be able to enter into the holies of holies. You won't be able to come into the kingdom because the door of judgment has already been shut against you. And this will be done on young people, family follow up with part 5. We want to deal now with the feast of tabernacle so this is the mystery of law Yom Kippur simply made a great terrible day for every goat to face the white judgment throne when the door is shut you are not coming in but the door is still open for you now this is the nature for this segment in order for you to put your house in order because come break comes on sin needs to go to somewhere is a cause either you take it by yourself or it goes to the Azazel goat the only way you can go to the Azazel goat that you agree with the royal law if not then it's going to remain with you and your eternal Ezra it is in the lake of fire we 